the opening number of Into the Woods is probably the most important, as it is in most shows, uh, and certainly uh, the longest and perhaps the most difficult to hold together. It's not so much that it's hard to sing, but it introduces all the main characters, or excuse me, almost all the main characters. It does not introduce the wolf, for example. But it's how we get to know the people. And the principle that James and I used here was that we wanted to tell as much exposition about the characters as possible and about their stories, but without spending too much time with any one so that the audience would not get bored. And therefore, we used a technique that's known in movies as cross-cutting. Well, that happens musically. So you go from one kind of a song to another kind of a song to another kind of a song, and yet you have to somehow maintain some unity through these opening 12 or 13 minutes. Uh, and that has to do with a kind of attitude of brightness. Even though sometimes the tempo relaxes and sometimes it increases, there is a kind of um, um, bounciness. It's held together by a constant quarter note motion that is staccato, bouncy, and bright. And uh, I'll play it for you in a second. But the important thing is that a narrator comes out and he says, once upon a time. And as soon as an audience hears that, they start to relax inside because they think it's going to be once upon a time, there was a little girl. Once upon a time, there was a, there was. And what I wanted to do was wake them up right away. So the narrator starts, and before he gets into the fifth word, I want a very loud sound from the orchestra or the piano, whatever it is. So it is. Once upon a time, and just at that point, the entire audience, I hope, will be startled into having to listen to what you're saying. So they, can ne they will also know instinctively that the evening is going to be full of surprises. That every time they think that they are going to be ahead of you, meaning the, the storytellers, you are in fact going to pull something on them. You're going to change a tempo. You're going to make a noise. Something odd is always going to happen. And so I, the audience throughout, and particularly in the opening number, should be alert. They don't know where you're going to cut next to. And again, it's like that, the very fast cross-cutting techniques in, in movies, in the Nouvelle Vague movies, where you don't know where you are. And the important thing, therefore, at the opening is two things. Startle the audience by having a very strong downbeat on the chord, or actually it's an upbeat, but the very first chord. <laughs> don't be afraid of how loud it is, but as soon as the chord comes in, come down, because people are going to start to sing. Now that eighth note, that quarter note motion, I put a, a direction here called risoluto, which means play it very steadily and very resolutely with no rubato and staccato all the time, but just keep it going so that it underlines, in fact, the whole first 13 minutes of the, uh, of the show. So Cinderella's the first one who sings, and she sings the key words of the piece. And you want to be sure you hear her, so you want to go. I wish, and every time that down needs a, oh, always loud down there, so the audience always feels a little jerked, and then they will, they will pay attention. The show opens with the words I wish and closes with the words I wish, and this isn't just because they're fairy tale languages, but in fact what the show is about is about a group of people who have various wishes, and during the course of the show they get their wishes, but in so doing upset the natural order of things and have to pay for it in the second act become a community, uh, submerge their individual wishes into a community wish, and thereby save the world, so to speak. So be sure that when you start the piece, it's resolute, and yet her I wish comes out with a certain amount of poignancy, with a certain amount of yearning. It isn't just Cinderella's wish that the show is going to deal with. About two sections into the number, we get the introduction of Little Red Riding Hood. Little Red Riding Hood, who has come into the baker's house to get some food and wine to bring, or food rather, to bring to her grandmother, has the title number of, this, of the show. And what this is, and, it, and it's used a great deal in the show, is that same quarter note motion with a slightly different chord, not entirely different, but slightly different. And it should have a relationship to the way the show opened. But the reason for this number is that it is a walking number. I wanted a number called Into the Woods, or that's the way it, what it turned out to be, that would reflect musically what it means to take a journey. And so the number starts fairly uh, uh, steady, with a steady motion, but suddenly a little kind of glumping figure happens in it, and it becomes, in fact, key to the whole piece. Thus, when the number begins, it goes, 
Into the woods it's time to go, I hate to leave, I have to go. Into the woods it's time and so I must begin my journey. Into the woods and through the trees to where I am expected, ma'am. And that's where it's changing. Be sure that you accent those little off beats so that the whole thing is slightly off center. And through the trees to where I am expected, ma'am. Into the woods to grandmother's house. Always emphasize. Don't go. But hold those notes. Now Jonathan has done that in the orchestra, but be sure when you're even during rehearsals that you play that you play it that way. Um, that will give some sense of the walking motion as opposed to the that we opened for. And will, in fact, establish uh, the theme throughout. When I spoke earlier about <coughs> watching the tempo markings, it's because there is so much in the show that has this quarter note motion. Or even in 3-4, when Jack and uh, Jack's mother are talking, they're going. over the evening can get very boring unless you pay very careful attention to the fact that it's slightly slower here and slightly faster there, that's slightly louder here and slightly uh, uh, softer there, and that sometimes it's in 3-4, sometimes it's in 4-4. Four, four. Make sure that all those little, um, I won't call them subtleties, but um, approaches are just different enough so the audience doesn't feel that it's relentless in the wrong way. And yet, it is that relentlessness that will keep the energy going throughout the evening and keep the show bouncing. Very important to keep the show bouncing. <laughs>